Hey there, welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, today we're, we're, we're taking a trip back in time, and we always do that, because most of the roguelikes we look at are older. Even when we're looking at the seven-day roguelikes, those date back to, you know, the earliest ones were 13 years ago. Including this one, 13 years ago. Um, now, we covered the 2005 seven-day roguelike challenge before. But I mentioned the other day that I discovered another seven-day roguelike challenge, one that exists between 2006 and 2007. Uh, and in investigating that, when I looked at certain entries for it, even though there were some entries listed as failed, I recognized the names of those games. And a, and a thought occurred to me that had never occurred to me before, and it's pretty obvious, and I'm kind of ashamed. When I was looking at the 2005 seven-day roguelike challenge, the 2006 and the 2007 seven-day roguelike challenges, I only looked at the successful entries. If it said failed, I ignored it completely. But that was not the right way to go about things, because failed means it failed to be completed in the allotted time. Uh, as you can see at the very top of this screen, welcome to Scrap, the extended 10-day roguelike. Um, this game was failed. It was a 2005 7-day roguelike challenge failure. Uh, that said, it was the, the, the developer went on to continue to work on it, and it, uh, it was eventually completed. Let me see if I have a name for that developer, by the way. Uh, I, I will not pronounce this name correctly. Thijs Van Omen? T-H-I-J-S Van Omen. V-A-N space O-M-M-E-N. Um, what I find particularly fascinating, we're going to dive into this fairly quickly, but uh, there's several things I want to tell you about it first. It's a robot game. Um, I, we've talked a bit about Cogmind before. It's an extremely popular, currently commercial Roguelike, where you play a robot and you have different systems that you incorporate into your your frame. As I understand it, I've never played Cogmine yet. Um, that was made for the originally for the 2012 Seven Day Roguelike Challenge. It was definitely not the first uh, game of its nature, though, where you have a robot and you're using different systems. Before that, we've seen obviously Hive Mind. We reviewed that or looked at that a few days ago from the 2007 Seven Day Roguelike Challenge, and here we have Scrap from the 2005 seven-day roguelike challenge. There is a manual. There is a readme. Uh, neither of which provides you the actual story. You are some sort of robot fighting other robots. I can't seem to find any indication of why or of what your objective is precisely. Uh, but we're going to play it anyway. I've I played it already. It was, it was really fun. I abandoned it on the uh, third dungeon level um, just to make sure I could record it for you. But it's really cool. Uh, the first thing I got to draw your attention to in this is you can look over here. Oh, fuck me. I forgot to turn my damn mouse on. Can I do that now? What happens if I do that now? Let me see if I can. Mouse. Uh, transform order. Fill properties. Capture cursor. No. Okay. I don't think that shows you the mouse, per se. I wouldn't know, though. Um, properties. Oh well, I'll figure it out later. If, if a mouse is present currently, hey, good on you. If not, uh, sorry. If you can see what I'm pointing at, it doesn't matter. It's pretty big and obvious. The right of the screen, we see power cell, medium gun, two-wheel drive, short-range sensor, and iron plating. Those are the default systems your robot begins with. Unlike uh, Hive Mind, Hive Mind, Hive Awakening, Mother of Pearl. Hive Awakening, where you start with a drill. Um, we start with an actual medium gun, a, a sort of cannon. If you want to see details about these things, you press the letter D for details. And here it, it gives you your actual system details. We have a power cell. It's currently at 100% of operational status. Everything is at 100% of operational status. The medium gun has strength of 35. That is a ratio of like how much damage it does. Not ratio, but a, a rating of how much damage it does. It does normal type damage. There are different styles of damage in this. It has a range of two squares. You can see as well terrain um, to the right of that, and a bunch of ones that are highlighted. There are different types of terrain in this game. This cannon, this gun, can fire into any of the highlighted terrains. It cannot fire into the one, that, the first one that's there, the tilled, is, a, is underwater. Uh, the asterisk is a low obstacle. I think the hashtag is, an, is a wall, and the, and the zero might be a, a, an iron wall or metal wall. We are also using a two-wheel drive propulsion system. It has speed of six, 
and it can go over these three types of terrains. It cannot enter those other types of terrains. A short range sensor it senses area around us. We can see a range of three, but we cannot see through question marks or tilds or blah, blah, blah. And finally, armor uh, strength 10, That's a it helps reduce damage we take. Um, let's start playing, and I'll fill out the rest of the systems as we go. Let's just press a key to get out of here. Use the numpad to move around. Let me move my mouse. If you could see my mouse, I'm sorry, I'm moving it to the side because I'm going to use my numpad. Use the numpad to move. Press the question mark. Oftentimes, we'll give you a nice result. Here it does. Question mark shows you the, the various controls for the, uh, for the game. Let's press at, the at symbol. It tells us we're at level one of the dungeon. Let's start moving around. You can see the green highlighted is the area we can actually see with our short-range sensor. That is an enemy. Now, there doesn't seem to be a look command. That is a, a disappointment. It's a minor thing, but there doesn't seem to be a way to investigate what that was, what that is, as far as I can tell. Maybe I can use four? What happens if I use four? Oh, yeah, okay, you can use your short-range sensor. There you go. So press the number corresponding to your sensor, whatever that is, and then it actually goes into look. There you go. So we're looking at a probe. That is what that P is. And you can see its systems. It has a power cell of 100%, a weak laser gun, hovering thruster, and scanner. I know from experience the hovering thruster moves very slowly, but it allows you to go over almost every terrain. Its scanner will be better than our short range scanner. I can tell you that from experience as well. Its weak laser gun, I don't know enough about to say. It probably does a different type of damage than our cannon and maybe less. And the power cell is fairly standard. There might be other types of power cells. Um, when you actually fight an enemy, you will be hitting its various systems. At present, I haven't found a way to control which system you hit. There might be weapons later or sensors later that give you that opportunity. Um, but at present, uh, the only thing you do is you hit a random system when you hit. And you do a certain amount of damage based on what type of gun you're using and the type of uh, armor it has and blah, blah, blah. Um, if you knock out its power cell, it is dead. And you can scavenge whatever is left intact. Any system that is knocked to less than 50% will stop working. So if we can get his weak laser gun down to less than 50%, it can't shoot back. Um, there is no bump to attack in this, by the way. Um, but that said, as long as your power cell is functional, it will slowly repair systems. Um, it'll pick whichever one it feels is prior most important, but you can also prioritize those yourselves. So let's start firing at this guy. Now, how do you shoot? Uh, we, you saw we pressed, the f we pressed 4 to use our short-range sensor. It stands to reason we pressed 2 to use our mini gun, medium gun. We're at a range of two, three, though, and we need to be a range of two, so we got to get closer to it. There, it fired at us. The probe hits our power cell. It's down to 99%. Let's fire at it. So we hit the probe scanner, knocking it offline. Our power cell is completely restored. The probe hits our power cell. Now let's uh, look really quickly at it again. I want to see something. So its scanner is offline. I'll tell you one thing that's a bit confusing. My scanner went offline earlier, and I couldn't see the enemy to shoot at it, but it can see us, apparently. I don't know what that's about, but let's just keep shooting at it. It's not going to be a big threat. We hit his power cell, it hits our power cell. We hit his, pro his power cell knocking offline. Oh, it's moved a bit. Um, and again, the power cell just repairs things. It will repair itself when it's below, uh, below the threshold. You hit the probe's power cell, destroying it. The enemy explodes, your power cell is completely restored. I didn't know about that. Now, if you bump into a dead body, you can take things. Let's take its weak laser gun. Now, where do you want to put it? So you have these five slots, but you have eight slots, in fact. So don't, I, I wish it listed just an, uh, a blank six, seven, and eight for newcomers so they know that. It tells you in the README file in the manual, but let's put it in number six. We have another weapon. Let's look at that in a minute, but let's actually, re let's take the other scanner as well. We'll take the scanner and put it in seven. Now we have two scanners. Do we need two scanners? No. But if our scanner gets knocked offline, we'll still have the short range sensor. Now you can see the scanner itself is better. It has a range of four versus our short-range sensor of three. And it can see into one more train type. It can see through the uh, low obstacles versus a short-range sensor, which cannot. Uh, so for now, we'll keep them both. And if you watch as we walk around, you'll see the, uh, the scanner slowly repairing itself. We could take the other thing, too. I mean, why not? Let's just take it for now as ballast. Let's take the hovering thruster and put it in slot eight. Um, what does that do for us? Actually, it might, might even be able to use it. Let's see if we can pass over... Uh, the low obstacles now. You can see the two-wheel drive gives us a speed of 6, the hovering thruster has a speed of 0. It's very, very slow. But um, it does go over more types of terrain. Let's see if it functions as long as we have it. Yeah, so as long as we have it, we can we get the most, best of both worlds, I assume. We're using our fast speed and our uh, and our ability to fly, essentially, or hover. 
Oops, we missed a little a little bit of terrain over here. Let's go soup, soup that up. Uh, the map is only as big as this area to the left of this thing. There's another uh, guy. Let's use our sensor to see what it is. That is a sentry. It has a power cell, a disruptor, and an X-ray scope. We might as well kill it because we're here. <laughs> let's fire our basic medium gun. Uh, let's look at our laser as well so we know. So the laser has a lot less strength. Um, it can shoot into more types of terrain, though. No, maybe not. Same same types of terrain. It's anti-sensor, which means it does extra damage to the sensor, or maybe it automatically hits the sensor. I don't know. But we're not too concerned with that. Let's just fucking fire at it with our medium gun for now. My scanner is completely destroyed, I think it said. Or did it say it's, it was? I didn't really see. Let's look at our system. No, its, it's scanner was completely destroyed. Which may mean it can't see anything. I don't know. Let's find out in a second. No, I didn't, maybe I misread that. I didn't see it saying anything about that. We got its disruptor offline, though. It can't shoot at us anymore. It's still within two squares. Let's keep shooting. How far does the laser shoot? It's also two. Let's take the disruptor instead of the weak laser and compare it. Actually, before we do that, let's uh, look and see what our weak laser is. Range of two, strength 15, shoots in the usual shit, anti-sensor. Two. Uh, whoops. Place the disruptor in slot six. Uh, has a range of one, does a little more damage. Anti-weapon. So if you really want to make sure we knock out a guy's weapon fast, that could be useful. Maybe we'll keep that instead of the, uh, instead of the weak laser gun. It has to be repaired. As you can see, it's, uh, it's choosing to repair our iron plating. I have no problem with that. Uh, as soon as that's done, it started in on the short-range sensor, actually, right now, it looks like. No, maybe not. Oh, it's because we're fighting, for God's sakes. I'm looking at the damned meters on the right and not paying attention to what's going on. <laughs> Sorry. Let's, uh, we can't fire our disruptor yet. It's, it's below 50%. Let's just fire it with our normal cannon. As you see, having a hovering thruster as well just gives us an extra thing for it to hit as well. Helps spread the damage out, right? If you're a Battletech player, you know having... Having damage spread out is better than having it concentrated in one area. I fucking love Battletech. Alright, his minigun is offline, so it can't shoot at us for the moment, but it's moving faster than us. It's much faster than us. It, no, there it is. Alright, we killed it. Let's get that damned uh, buggy drive. I like the buggy drive better than our two-wheel drive. Let's grab that. Let's go to the D. The buggy drive is speed 9. It might go into slightly less terrain. I'm not sure. Let's take a look at this. It uh, goes into the first three. Let's use our scanner. Oops. Uh, Two-wheel drive. Can I see anything about it? No, I guess not. Not without taking it. I think the uh, buggy drive is better. It doesn't matter. Of course, our hovering thruster for the time being gives us the ability to enter almost anything anyway. I wouldn't mind uh, repairing some shit before we fight that guy. Let's just go hide up here for a minute. Let's get our disruptor back. We can maybe blast its weapon. I don't know if we need to. I mean, it's nice to have the ability to target a weapon. I guess that's how you target things. Incidentally. Maybe it automatically targets the weapon. Hell, maybe it only targets the weapon. I don't know. Like, if the weapon's gone, will it still target something? There's no food or anything I can see in this, so we might as well just take the time to heal all the way. All right, let's uh, let's try the disruptor. Let's just try it out. So we hit this buggy drive. Maybe just maybe this anti weapon means it uh, it does more damage to weapons. Let's nonetheless try that again. We hit his mini gun. How did, I'm gonna use my uh, medium gun. But let's just take a look. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have done that much damage. There, we knocked it completely offline with our medium gun. Still faster than me, that bugger. Oh, I guess the same speed now, actually. We hit the buggy drive knocking it offline. Our buggy drive is completely restored. Now, when your drive is offline, when your propulsion is offline, you can still move. I've seen enemies do it. I assume you go to a speed zero, um, but you can still move, technically. Just very slowly. What's going on here? Me oh, it's too far away. That's why. Medium gun. Medium gun. 
You can see it's much slower than it was. <laughs> Catching up to it easily. Die for the love of God. I don't think there's any experience. I think you only get what you salvage from dead bodies. Dead uh, corpses of robots. Alright, we're in 100% condition. Let's just go down. Usual greater than on the greater than symbol to go down. You cannot go back up. Again, I don't know what our objective is. Let's play till we win or until we die. Let's play for 30 minutes. Of course, we'll stop recording at that point. But let's play till we win or die. Win, lose, or die. Let's fire our medium gun. I love my medium gun so far in comparison to, say, the disruptor. I don't really see a point in the disruptor as of yet. Um, as you can see, having multiple systems mostly helps. Like the short range sensor and the scanner, or the short range sensor is just a backup. The hovering thruster, though, and the buggy drive allows us to get the bust of both worlds. That said, it did say online if you're using armor, it uses only your strongest armor. Now, I don't know if that means, like, if you have a certain type of armor that prote provides protection against certain types of weapons, do you still get that protection but get the highest value of armor? I don't know. But, uh, if you're using armor, be aware that it may not... A mini range sensor. Let's just take it for a second just to see what it is. We'll, we'll put it right back. So there's a range of two, so it's even less than a short range sensor. We don't need that. Let's take our hovering thruster back. You can also reorder your stuff. Like if you want to do, let's let's reorder. Let's move six to three. That way our weapons are together. The medium gun and the you press R for reorder, by the way. And let's move our seven. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's reorder seven to five. That way we have our scanners together as well. And then let's reorder seven to eight. So our, our plating is on the bottom. So all our systems are kind of grouped. I think it's a dynamite game. It's, um, at least from what I've seen so far, I've made it to level three, as I said. Um, what is that guy? It's got a lot going for it, and on top of that, Hunter, it's got a phaser rifle, it's got emergency power. The fact that it's gray means it's shut down. You can choose to shut down certain systems if you want to. Some systems draw energy when they're not being used, even. Emergency power is one of those. I think it serves as a backup power core, as far as I can tell. Okay, he got us. Let's hit him with our medium gun. We hit a short range sensor. He hits our power cell. We hit his phaser rifle. I mean, the enemies also seem to scale, right? Like it's uh, these are a little bit tougher than what we were seeing before. But uh, that said, I mean, when I got to the third level, I was seeing tanks that were tougher yet, but not nothing so tough I couldn't take it so far. Even the game I left, I was winning, or at least you know, still still surviving just fine. His phaser rifle's gone. Fuck. See, the problem is it will go heal itself, but we got we got to deal with a you know an immediate threat more than, than that guy. So he's his dude who took off Hunter. His uh his power cells record is repairing his systems as we speak. At least this guy's dead. We don't need anything he has. X-ray scope is is akin to a short range sensor. I think it can see through um metal walls. Maybe I'm not sure. Look at it in a minute. Let's go deal with this guy first. We can fire over this, can't we? So because we're firing our medium gun, it won't let us do that. But if we try and fire our... Uh... Oh, we got rid of it, didn't we? No, our disruptor. Invalid target. Does the disruptor not fire through that? Or does it have a range, a lower range? The disruptor only fires one. That's the problem. All right, fuck it. He's hiding on us here. Medium gun. Took out his two-wheel drive. He's dead. He's dead. Um, power core, short range sensor, we don't need any of that. Oh, wait a minute. Power core versus power cell. Let's just see what happens. What is what is that about? It gives us power eight. So it's better than a power cell, which only gives us power zero, right? I assume. This would seem to make sense to me. On the other hand, we are obviously damaging. You can see it's repairing the power core only until it gets fully healed. Then it's moving on and prioritizing what it feels is most important. I will allow it to do its thing. I don't really care what it fixes right now. We're all better. Okay, that's a tank. Um, We hit his power cell. It hit our scanner. You can see right here it has, has power cell. That's what we had before. Now we have power core. It has a gun, though, and that is more powerful than our um, medium gun, I believe. It also has tank armor, which is probably more powerful than our uh, 
There are, and the caterpillar track will a lot will probably move slower, but it allows it to go over more terrain. That said, we're gonna kick its ass. I can feel it. We took out his tank armor, or at least knocked it offline. Destroyed something. I wasn't really paying attention. Oh, we got rid of his gun. There we go. We got this thing on the run. Something got completely restored. I didn't see what it said. He's got a short range sensor. His tank armor got destroyed again. Or it got destroyed. If a, if a system reaches 0%, as opposed to less than 50%, 50, less than 50%, it goes offline. He has nothing left. We didn't get anything out of him. Less than 50%, it goes offline. Uh, at 0%, it's destroyed completely and you can't repair it. If you can keep it above 0%, uh, you can always fix things. Hunter again. Oops. Because it's phaser rifles offline, it can't pose a threat to us per se. Our uh, our buggy drive let us keep up with it and and or exceed its speed. Yeah, power eight. That's cool. Okay. All right. Let's see if there's anything in this void over here. Any, any monsters? Monsters? Any uh, enemy robots we missed? I wish I knew the story. Like it feels. I, I'm enjoying this on its own merits, but I, I want to know the story. If I've overlooked the story and somebody knows it, if they find it in the README file or the manual, and I'm just too stupid to see it, if you've downloaded it and you can see that. Um, let's take the gun in favor of... First of all, the gun in favor of the disruptor. We don't use the disruptor anyway. Let's take a look at that. So the gun does oh, less damage than our medium gun. Um, range of two. Nah, we're better off with our... Uh, better off with our uh, disruptor out of those two. So two, three... And a tank armor. Let's take tank armor in favor of iron plating. Let's actually look at our iron plating first. So it has a strength of 10, 5, in exchange for 8. Strength of 15, okay. So it's better armor. Let's let our armor, let's everything come back. Alright, we upgraded our armor. That's pretty cool. I can definitely say, I, I mean, if you watched Hive Awakening, it had some interesting things going on. It had some complex things going on in terms of, you know, circuit boards and shit like that. This game feels a lot more straightforward, and I gotta say, I'm enjoying it more. A lot more. Um, beyond the fact that, uh, of course, uh, Hive Awakening also had some alignment problems where you had to kind of move everything around and nothing was quite working out. Um, this is pretty cool. Let's take a look with our scanner and see what the hell we're looking at. So we know that's rock. Okay, low barrier. Rough ground. Uh, we can probably enter that with it. Because of our hover thing, I, can, I think we can enter it no problem. Um, yeah, exclamation points. But if we were just using our buggy drive, as you can see, we would not be able to. I wonder if we move at speed zero when we're on this, because we're limited to uh, using that one type of uh, propulsion. I don't know. I wish it showed you a speed variable somewhere. So you can you could gauge that. We knocked this power core offline. Which means it's only allowed to repair its power core. I keep seeing the rough terrain and thinking, yeah, potion. <laughs> Alright, we got it. I don't think it has anything we want, but we killed it. We killed it! Actually, the emergency power would probably be more useful to us than the disruptor. Let's take that. Let's take the emergency power in favor of the disruptor. Let's reorder three to two so our power systems are together. You can see we're repairing it pretty fast. And if we go to D, uh, it uses 35 power but provides 32. But I don't think we, I don't think it's turned on right now. I don't know if we need it. I don't, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't quite understand what it does. I'm assuming it's equivalent of a backup power core, but I could be totally wrong. Watch out or you'll fall off the map. If incidentally you try bumping to attack, uh, 
it tells you that's not going to work, you know, or something like that. Whoops, I don't mean to do that. Uh, while well, it is switched off. Okay, it, emergency power can also only f fix itself while it's switched off. That's not what I'm trying to do, though. Um, yeah, you can use that to repair. I guess actually you can repair two, th two systems at once probably, too, now that I think about it. If you want to repair a specific system instead of allowing it to do its own thing. Like, if we only had the power core, we would press 1 to access the power core and then press another number to tell it, designate, this is the next thing to repair. Perhaps we can do that with both uh, with both systems if we have a lot to repair. I guess that makes sense. That's what that is. But we don't need it right now. I don't fully understand the power rules yet either. Like, the power core gives us 8 power. The emergency power requires a certain amount of power. Like I don't, I don't quite know how that works. I, I think we've also not figured out, for instance, the disruptor, which was an anti-weapon weapon. I don't know if we figured out how that works. Maybe it does double damage to weapons or something, but because it did so little damage to begin with, oops, I'm not trying to do that because I'm used to pressing two from medium gun. I pressed the wrong thing. No, don't do that. Three. Phaser rifle? Let's come back for that. Ah, oh, fuck, I keep doing the wrong button. Let's do medium. Okay, I'm trying to use my damn medium gun. Three. Because things have limited sensor range, too, you can see like that. Oops. That uh, tank doesn't see us yet, because it can't see that far. Why is it not uh, bumping them? It's not going to get the job done, you know. I'm not trying to bump them. I'm trying to press three for medium gun. Fire. All right, it's dead. It's dead. I don't think I can tell anything about it uh, right now. Like if we take, I like the idea of this emergency power. I don't know if I need a, another weapon right now. Let's just take it for a second to see what it does. So it's got strength 18, so much less than my uh, medium gun. It's anti-power source, so I guess if you hit a power source, it's going to do more. It's, it's, when I say guess, I do mean guess. Let's take back our medium gun in favor of the phaser rifle. Fuck, I keep pressing the two for... Because that was our medium gun for the longest time. We're almost done this playthrough. Let's finish this level. Um, am I firing at that goddamn dead guy there? Three. Oh, I'm still trying to fire at the dead guy. I guess you can keep firing at it if you want to. Fuck. Probe's coming. It has long range uh, view. Let's take out this tank first. Tank's gun is off. That's good. How's this thing outrunning us? Don't need it. All it had left was a short range sensor. I love the idea of salvaging the equipment too. It's pretty cool. Fuck. Ah, press the wrong damn key. Ah. Let me just sit up a little straighter here. Take measures to not hurt myself. Picture this guy like an Imperial probe droid. Yeah, the different robot types, like there's a lot going on in this game, and it's it's all pretty cool. As I said, I think it's simpler, more straightforward, and for those reasons, 
in my experience so far more fun than say Hive Awakening I can't comment on uh, on Cogmine having never played it neither the original free version or the commercial version we will get to the free version eventually no matter what uh, we may or may not get to the commercial version alright we're going to go down here I'm going to stop recording there is a way to uh, save you can see right here shift s to save the game uh, I'm going to stop recording though and uh, then I'm going to play one more round then I have to get my day started I got to go get a haircut we got to clean up this house we got to get groceries we got to get stuff for the cats all in preparation for leaving town for the holidays so I have limited time today but we'll, we'll play one more round because fuck I'm having fun alright let's stop the recording I'll see you guys soon bye <laughs>